One of the biggest winners and better stories at this year's Grammy Awards was Casey Musgraves, a country artist who took home Best Album of the Year. But the reality for many women in country music is very different, especially when it comes to getting on the radio. Jeffrey Brown, who profiled Casey Musgraves last month, has a report on Nashville's gender imbalance and what's being done to address it. It's part of our regular series on arts and culture, Canvas. This is the sound of Monday nights at the listening room. And I love you for that. Known in Nashville as a writer's round, where singer-songwriters learn to hone their craft before a live audience. But this one is different and rare. An all-female showcase in a city dominated by male voices. You got that sun, tan, skirt, and boots. Turn to a country station today, and this is what you're most likely to hear. I'm a little bit steady, but still a little bit rolling stone. There was this girl drinking her hand. In fact, in 2017, just around 10% of Billboard's top 60 country songs were by women, a number that's actually fallen in recent years. And it was that persistent disparity that led producer Todd Cassidy to found this all-female showcase called Song Suffragettes. We thought if we create a female-only weekly show where a lot of these women can come, play their songs, try them out, see what the responses are, meet like-minded creatives, they would benefit and hopefully the community as a whole would benefit. I got my high heels on with my boxing gloves. I Kaylee Shore is one of them. Originally from Maine, in 2012, she graduated high school early so she could move to Nashville to pursue her dream. My first concert ever was the Dixie Chicks with Michelle Branch opening. And I was nine, and I just remember looking at them and being like, that's what I want to do. In 2015, Shore had a hit single in Fight Like a Girl, a song discovered here at the listening room and played on the Sirius XM station, The Highway. It was an anthem for an issue she's become outspoken about, the lack of opportunities for young women in country music. But ironically, that experience only served to highlight how bad the problem was. It's doing all this stuff and, and getting all this traction that has, you know, millions of streams and it sold really, really well. And I walked into a couple of major labels and had them look me in the eye and say, we can't sign another girl right now, we already have one. We can't sign, we already have one. Yeah, and it sounds unbelievable. And um, like I literally had someone say like, oh, well we'd sign you if you were a guy. Like literal concrete, you know, stuff people will say around town and they're comfortable saying it because it's just kind of part of it now. For many in Nashville, the lack of women's voices on the air came to a head in 2015. That's when a country radio consultant named Keith Hill told a trade newsletter that to maximize radio listenership, women should be like tomatoes in a larger salad of male artists. Never played back to back and never more than about 20% of the mix. Those comments confirmed what many had long suspected, that the lack of women on country radio was by design. It's kind of historically kind of an accepted practice that if you play more women, listeners will turn the channel and your ratings will go down, which will affect your revenue. But you're saying it's, a, it's perceived economics. You don't buy it? There, there's no research. There's no hard research to prove this. The backlash to the remarks became known as Tomato Gate and galvanized women across the industry to speak out about their experiences of sexism. It's long been reported that women in music can't sell merch the way that men can. Including at this monthly forum called Change the Conversation. That way you know how to identify me. Each month, songwriters, performers, producers, industry veterans and newcomers, mostly women but men too, gathered to share stories. I have two words on merchandise, Taylor Swift. Beverly Keel helped found the group. She's a journalist and professor of recording at Middle Tennessee State University. I wrote a column in the Tennessean about it and said, look, here, you know, the problems at country radio because they're not playing women. And then you have a chilling effect because country radio is still the driver in country music. 
So if country radio doesn't play women, labels don't sign women, female songwriters aren't going to get signed as much, you won't see as many female producers, and so on. I mean, is it sexism? Is it economics? Perceived economics? What? I think it is long-held beliefs. I think it, it, it's sexism. There's institutional sexism. We can't believe we're having this conversation in 2019. I think it's uh, just as frustrating to radio as it is to anybody else. That's R.J. Curtis, incoming head of the Country Radio Broadcasters, a nonprofit group that helps promote the music. Look, it's a, it's a multi-layered situation and it's f***ed up all over. He's been attending the Change the Conversation meetings and wants people to recognize that this problem isn't just with radio, but with the entire industry pipeline, from talent scouts to publishers to labels. If you looked at the rosters of most major labels in town here, I think you'd find that the ratio is about a four to one male to female in terms of artists on that roster. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's just a, just fewer of them coming at radio yeah. for airplay consideration. If you're a woman who's concerned about this and they're hearing you say, well, it's the ecosystem, that would be frustrating. Uh, very frustrating. Right? And, and Because I, then I, it's like, but everybody's to blame, nobody's to blame. Yeah, I, I, I can see their frustration. I definitely hear that. We reached out to multiple country radio stations for comment, but none responded. And whether radio is the driver of this marketplace or just another victim of decisions made at other levels, many here say it's past time for solutions. I don't know what happened. I don't know what caused it. I don't know who caused it. And we don't want to just put the blame on country radio. And Change the Conversation is not interested in finding blame or pointing fingers. We just want to find a solution. One answer, new streaming platforms, social media, and touring to connect directly with audiences, circumventing radio. And sinks back down. Radio Disney Country is a relatively young, mostly streaming station based in Los Angeles that's found an audience by playing mostly women in its mix. You can have your space, cowboy. And prominent artists such as Margot Price and Casey Musgraves, who just won four Grammys, including Album of the Year, are succeeding despite a lack of airplay. Lonely pillows in a stranger's bed, little voices. Meanwhile, in Nashville, forums like Change the Conversation and Song Suffragettes are bringing women together to help one another. All the songs that I can listen to tell the truth. I think in the past five, six years that I've been in town, I saw this attitude shift even within myself where it was like, she's not your competition. She's trying to do the same thing you're doing and that's great because like, you know, Patsy and Loretta were best friends, you know? And um, Dolly and Emmy Lou and, and all that, like women can support each other and I think they're more successful when they are. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Nashville.